You're listening to the Social U Podcast, sponsored by Social University. Be sure to follow us on our socials listed in the show notes. Now, let's dive in. I'm Becky Johnson. And I'm Laura Black. Welcome to the Social U Podcast. Today, we are talking about the dark side of social media. Some of these things are annoyances, and then some of these things are going to be really tragic. To get into it, let's start off with some of the more annoying side. This can go a little dark, and then it can go really dark. I went minorly dark when I was thinking about this, so we'll see where this goes today. This could be a lot of fun. I mean, there's just those little minor annoyances like last minute changes and edits and always having to be available if you're a social media manager. But moving forward, like if you're super dark side, I'm going to say trolls and keyboard warriors are pretty dark side to me because they're so annoying. They can just ruin your day. I don't know how else to say that. And it is kind of a commentary on society today that people Mm -hmm. feel so entitled to speak so freely about things that most of the time have absolutely nothing to do with them. Yeah, absolutely. It's that jerk that pops on and totally trolls. They just have nothing to do with the conversation. They just jump on there and and say things like, I remember we had a client who is actually no longer in business, but they sold candy and somebody got on and said they bought candy and there was worms in their candy, like maggots or whatever. There was not, that is ridiculous. And it caused serious damage. You know, they had to do some major damage control on that. And why? Because somebody wanted to get a, a cheap laugh out of that. I mean, that's terrible. So to give you an idea of how my list went, because this is a good inside look at the minds of Laura Black and Becky Johnson, because (laughs) your dark side is so wholesome. (laughs) And (laughs) the least tragic thing on my dark side is the low self-esteem that a lot of teenagers are experiencing because they don't get enough likes or they're cyber bullies making fun of them publicly on social media. and. It can be really damaging to their mental health because they put so much value into if people like their stuff on Instagram, you know, in our childhood, that was not even a thing. And I can't imagine having to deal with, oh, I have to have people like me at school and also on the entire Internet. It's just a lot to ask. Yes, absolutely. I do think that's one of the deeper dives of of the dark side and the kids don't understand it. They don't realize it. It's subtle sometimes. Sometimes it's very blatant, but um, it's, it's hitting them from all sides because they're on it all day long. Mm -hmm. They don't know what hit them. And then we have this mental health crisis because of all these things coming at them. And how do you protect them from that? Where's the overstepping with protection and um, freedom of speech, that kind of thing. But then these are our kids. These are minors. These are, let's roll this back. And how do you protect them? And even when you see kids that are out doing things like, oh, we're going to the football game, they're still on their phones. They're watching the football game with one eye and on their phone with the other. And even in our home, I have kids that have phones, but then Mm -hmm. like one of my children, I didn't allow her to get a phone until she was way older than I allowed some of the others to get phones Mm -hmm. because I knew that it was not good for her mental health. We tried it. It was not good. And so we stopped it and pushed pause and said, you know, hey, maybe one day, not today. And I think you have to do that as a parent. And we did that with Instagram. We let our oldest on Instagram and it got to be so consuming. We pulled her off of it for a while. And she kind of understood at the end, if she didn't in the beginning, but She did finally understand, oh, I see how that sucked me in and it took me to places I didn't need to be. It was so consuming and it could have been really bad. Um, She's got really good self-esteem, but I can see for a child who doesn't or maybe on the fringe, that can be really, really damaging. And sometimes Mm -hmm. they don't realize they're only seeing everyone's highlight reel. Yes. Like yesterday, me and my family, we went out and had fun at one of the Metro parks and I posted that. What I did not post was that on the way home, my car started running hot because I was stuck in traffic and I had to pull over and let it cool off and then get back on the road in the traffic and go 100 feet down the road and pull over again. And it took me forever to get where I was going because I ended up having to pull over about five times and letting my car cool off. That doesn't make it to social media. You know, that wasn't on there. Right. And so people look and they only see, oh, this person has this wonderful life and they're so gorgeous because they have all these filters on and they don't know that that's not what that person really 
doesn't look like that in real life. Well, and I think it's right. just easy to compare yourself to something that doesn't even exist. Well, right. Even we fall into that and I fall into that. Even today, I was like, we're not recording this episode, right? Because <laughs> I don't like how my hair looks. You know, if <laughs> I'm not going to put that out there unless it's um, pretty, you know, or picture perfect or whatever. And that's just so not real. Curated. It's yeah. our lives are curated. Online. That's a great way to put that. I love that. So, and I mean, it's like, it just carries on. We talked a few episodes back about, you know, fake stuff and real stuff. And um, it just carries over that fake reality. I have a couple on my list that actually have to do with teenagers, but two mm-hmm. of them that kind of go together for me are grooming, how people will groom people over social media, even to the point of human trafficking. Yes. Grooming people on social media. And then also these horrible, horrible stories where you hear about these people who end up having an inappropriate conversation with somebody they don't really know. They end up exchanging pictures and then this person blackmails them and says, if you don't send me $3,000, I'm going to send this to your mom and everybody you go to school with. And everybody's going to know that you did this and everybody's going to see these inappropriate photos of you. And to the point that there have been children that have actually killed themselves because they were just so humiliated and embarrassed being blackmailed by somebody that they would just rather end it than have to deal with their parents, you know, seeing these pictures. And that's the worst. That's so heartbreaking. And it is. It's a very um, important side of social media to think about. And even if you think your kid has great self-esteem or kids in your circle, even it doesn't take much to take them down. It matters. It's so, it's so sad. With one of our children, the one that I actually did not allow to have a phone until she was much older, she was playing an online video game and chatting with this person named JJ Unicorn or something like that. And this person was telling her that they were a 10 year old girl and Mm -hmm. just kept asking her can you video chat? Can you get this app and video chat me? And she didn't even have a phone. This was on the computer, but she, of course, to sound cool, had told them that she did have a phone. So they were like, get this app on your phone, get this app on your phone. And praise the Lord, she couldn't do it because she didn't even have a phone. I, of course, as a parent, am going back and checking these chat logs and I see this conversation and immediately red flag, like this does not sound like a 10 year old girl. So I take the information and do, like we talked about last week, I do my little FBI search myself Mm -hmm. on the internet and find out that that was a 40 year old man in Maryland. Oh my goodness. And nothing scares you to death. Like a, you know, like something like that, Mm -hmm. um, danger coming that close to your kid. Right. And what could have been, what could happen? And she was so naive. Like she didn't think that anybody Mm -hmm would lie, you know, especially not in this game that is for children. Yeah. So that was a real eye opener. Absolutely. Which I already knew things like that could happen, which is why I'm reading her chat logs to begin with, but still just mm-hmm. to see it with your child and to see your child that you have told these things to over and over and over still fall for it and still be like, no, that's a little girl. Mm-hmm. Just- yeah. And it's hard. I mean, we fall for things as grown ups. you know, like we try to educate ourselves as best we can, but it's still a mad, mad world out there. Well, um, as you said, I, I had the lighter dark side. Um, <laughs> I to go back and forth. So it's not all super heavy. You know, another to me is a dark side because y'all joke with me because I like everything sunshiny and happy because I like everybody to be happy, but keyboard warriors make me crazy. I think that's a dark side because it takes everybody down. It makes people mad. You know, it just stirs up commotion. And I don't like that. I mean, it's good to have a conversation, but when people are getting nasty, because they can hide behind a keyboard or behind a screen or even like, you know, on a lot of like Facebook group chats, you can go anonymous. That's come on. That just causes nothing but trouble in a lot of ways. Yeah. It so, almost makes you feel like you shouldn't be allowed to post things if you're not willing to put your name on it. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. then you also have those keyboard warriors get a little vigilante sometimes and they dox people mm-hmm. and they'll just put their entire address, phone number where they work, everything online. And those people's lives become miserable. And I mean, even dangerous. Yeah. Is all these random people who hate you now have your address and your phone number and they know where you work. Mm -hmm. And that's really scary. Or we were talking about with the games, swatting. Have you heard of swatting? Mm, No, I don't think so. 
So swatting is you get mad at somebody in a game. Mm -hmm. So you call the police and say, you find out, you do the doxing and find out where they live. And then you call the police and say, hey, I'm at so-and-so address, whatever their address is. And this guy has a gun and he's threatening to kill us all. Oh, like police so then, SWAT team. So then the oh, SWAT wow. team shows up at these people's house and busts the door down. And if the person looks like they're even about to do anything, they get killed. Like they, people have been killed from SWATting who were literally just innocent people playing a game. But the SWAT team has been informed that they are dangerous and have a weapon. And so in those split second decisions, they come out on the porch and get shot. Wow. Just wow. That's horrible. It's one of the things that makes me not want my children to play certain games. Mm -hmm. I do let my kids play video games, but the games that are known for that type of behavior, they do not play. Yeah, that's so scary. And kids need to know you can't, that's not right. You can't behave that way and, and expect it to be okay and to not accept consequences for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's not, not good. There was a, a bomb scare at my kid's high school this year and it was a kid, a former student called it in and said there was, and it was, it was a big one. Uh, they were locked down for most of the day. It was rough, but they found him and prosecuted because you just can't do that. The amount of resources that were zoned in on that, it was insane. Not to mention all the mental health, that mental health consequences. For Especially a at a school. Like you mm -hmm. should know if you call the school, they're going to know where you're mm -hmm. calling from. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. Yeah, they had them pretty quick. I have two more. Mm -hmm. And one of them is a very specific thing that has happened, but it's happened more than once. But I have like one actual instance of it. And then the other one is something that is happening way too often. Mm -hmm. So my next one is situations like the Conrad Roy incident. So Conrad Roy was an 18 year old boy and he was very depressed and suicidal. He is texting back and forth with his girlfriend and she's basically encouraging him just to end it. And then oh, wow. this goes on for weeks of her telling him, just do it, just do it. So then he gets in his truck and he is doing carbon monoxide poisoning. He gets scared, oh. gets cold feet halfway through, gets out of the truck and texts her. And she basically is like, stop being a baby. If you're going to do it, you need to just do it. And he oh, did. Wow. He got in the car. He got back in the truck and he died. And it ended up being like a test case in court because can you say words? We have freedom of speech. Can you say words are enough to lead somebody to kill themselves? And so it was like this whole thing. But the way that it relates to social media is that after it happened, of course, she is all over social media about being the poor, pitiful, grief stricken girlfriend. And it's all about attention for her. Like that was, it seems to be the whole point was so that she could then get all the attention for being the grieving girlfriend. And it was really tragic. That's horrible. That really is horrible. And it's like, that's when social media is so important to you and having people give you attention on social media is so important to you that you would actually do something that would cause someone to lose their life so that everybody could poor pitiful baby you on Facebook, you know, mm -hmm. again, why do they think this is okay? You know, why is this okay? She ended up having to obviously move because everyone where she's from knew. And then people, of course, where she moved, found out who she was. And so the thing that she thought was going to be great for her also ended up ruining her life as well. Not as bad as his mm. life, obviously, and his family. That's devastating. So that's that's life altering for so many people. She was convicted of manslaughter. She was initially sentenced to two and a half years in prison and later had the penalty reduced to 15 months, of which she served 11 months and 12 days. So wow. less than a year in prison for manslaughter for convincing her teenage boyfriend to kill himself. Wow. And it's like he got out of the truck and was second guessing it and was like scared. And she's like, no, nah, do it. I think so much online is, is, is enabling, I'm sure it is enabling people to step back from the emotional side of things in a lot of way. It, whereas that sounds kind of hypocritical or, you know, contradictory, but it's like you put this distance. It's like the keyboard warriors. They put that screen between. So we're going to put this phone between 
and oh, it's not real life. It's like the reality video games, like all of this stuff. It's allowing this alternate kind of reality for people and they think it's okay. Okay. The next one is really dark, but this is something that I personally have experienced and it really, really bothers me. Yeah. And that is when people post things that are really, really disturbing and they don't label it as disturbing. It's just in your newsfeed. So one good example, I was watching the news on like my Facebook feed and it showed someone actually getting killed in the feed. Like this person got shot. They fall down on the ground. There's blood coming out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was like reading a story about something that's happening in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And instead I'm watching someone's like last moments of life. Mm -hmm. There have been live streams where people after the whole Israel, Palestine, Mm -hmm. the very first thing that happened where all the people got killed at the concert where people were live streaming, walking around, like showing all of the bodies laying on the ground at the concert. And you just start scrolling and that stuff is just there. It's not like you're going to a website to look for it. Like it is just there on social media for everyone to see. I don't want to see that. I don't want that to be in my brain because once it's in there, it's in there. That has really personally bothered me. And there have been others that I have thankfully not seen where people have live streamed horrible things they're doing to people so that they can make someone else upset. Like Mm -hmm. there was a story about someone doing something to somebody's kids because they wanted to get back at their ex. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, that's the worst thing I can imagine. I'm very much freedom of speech, but at the same time, where is the line drawn where you can't see certain things? I'm with you. Maybe it's just that the labels need to be better, you know, so that you can decide for yourself whether you want to see it or not. That's probably the best way to do it. But at the same time, you got these kids again, (laughs) you know, it goes back to our, Mm -hmm. our younger kids, but there should be something that gives an alert at least. And sometimes you see, you know, that you want to see this or not, but more oftentimes than not, you don't. I don't want to not hear about things that TikTok has been showing, but other platforms are not showing because this real life is happening. But yet at the same time, you know, where's that, where's that line of protection? And imagine somebody is being killed in this video that you're able to see on Facebook or TikTok or somewhere. Imagine you're that person's family. And that's yes. how you find out. That's how you see it. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Sad personal story. I found out my brother passed away on Facebook. Oh, it's back when I was doing theater and I was in a rehearsal and in rehearsal, you're not allowed to have your phones. So it was probably three hours before I knew. And as soon as I came out of rehearsal, my phone lit up. I had all these missed messages. I had all these missed calls. The first thing I opened was Facebook, a Facebook message. And it was somebody telling me, I'm so sorry about your brother. And I had not even been told yet. Wow. That's awful. That's another dark side of social media. And it just shows you how prevalent all these things are, because these are things that we've actually experienced. It's not just things you hear about. Mm -hmm. These are things that have happened to me and my family. Right. Right. So if it's happened to us, you know, it's happened to thousands and millions of people. Yeah, I do like when they do the like blurred screen and say, hey, this may be disturbing content. If you choose to click on this, you are choosing to see that. I don't want to. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's enough sadness in the world. I do not need to add any more. I don't even watch sad movies. I don't watch any movies. Mm -hmm. Like I'm never going to watch The Notebook or Saving Private Ryan or Braveheart or any of these movies that people love because I know that they're sad and they make people cry and there's enough sadness in life without making myself be sad. (laughs) Yeah. Right. And I don't, I'm not going to watch anywhere the pets die either. I'm just saying. (laughs) I think before I had children, I was heartless. I could just watch anything and nothing bothered me. And then, well, I think it started when I got married, then I got married. And then I was like, oh, that can be sad when something happens to somebody's husband or wife. Then I had kids and I was like, nope, no more. I'm done. I'm done. I'm what about done. you, Karen? What do you think about the dark side of social media? I mean, obviously, I guess you think it's bad, but more We're thoughts. not talking about the Star Wars side. <laughs> well, Laura, um, rest assured, there is a website called doesthedogdie.com that you can oh. find out if anything happens before you watch the movie. Hallelujah. I'm going to mark that in my bookmarks because <laughs> if it even looks like it might even get hurt, I'm like, nope, not doing it. Oh, I'm watching it. We just got done with the mini series and I, uh, one of our team members, Nicole had seen it and I texted her 
there better not anything be happening to this dog. She was like, the dog is fine. You can continue just making sure. Where's John um, Rick at? <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, bullies, which you guys touched on, that mm-hmm. is definitely something that is prevalent because keyboard warriors assume they will never be found out. Mm-hmm. Although there are accounts dedicated to outing people who make terrible statements online. I came across one yesterday where men have been making these statements of violence about women on these posts about, I choose the bear. So there's an account that's been outing them so that their friends and family can see that they're saying these horrible, violent things online. It's like how ironic they're mad that women are saying that, but then they're literally showing why women are saying that. Exactly. Exactly. Because the bear is not on there threatening people that chose the man. And some of the statements are terrible. Terrible. Porn is a real thing. You are putting access to every pornographic video that's ever been made in the hands of your nine-year-old when you hand them a phone. Yep. So much of that content is not gated. It is easily accessible. And you can all, there's always a back door where even if you have parental controls in place, there's ways around that if your kid is clever. Be aware of that as a parent. It is there. And it, and I'll add on to that. It's not always in things you think it's going to be in. Like, Correct. I did hear that one of the, even the Bible apps, you got to watch out with those chats in there too. I'll because they the chat. count through there. And that's horrible. Human trafficking and sex trafficking is very real. Very real. Kids are extremely naive and trusting. Once upon a time, before my child was born, I was a Girl Scout leader. And we went on a field trip to a police department. And the kids at this time, this was pre-Facebook, but they had chat rooms. Mm -hmm. So these girls who are all under the age of 11 are chatting. And the whole purpose of this was to show them that the people they were chatting with were adult men. They were police officers in another room. So they're typing away. And of course, it's a it's a guard. And all of the parents approved this. We didn't do anything that the parents didn't know was going to happen. But basically, it's these kids talking about their daily lives. These people, of course, are telling them they're also little kids, little girls, little boys. And then these adult men come out from behind the curtain. And those kids were shook because those guys knew where they lived. They got their address. They got where they went to school. They knew how many siblings they had. They got mommy and daddy's workplace in their last name. They just spilled their guts because they thought they were talking to kids. That is horrifying to me. And it only progressively gets worse because kids just don't know who they're talking to. There is a law enforcement agency that is basically they, they target child predators. So one of the agents was digitally, graphically de-aged. They took her down to 15. They created a fake account for her to catch predators. Well, then the question came, is 15 too controversial? Could an adult predator say, I thought she was 18. So they made her 10. And the results were chilling, chilling. I think it took less than 30 seconds for um, the 10-year-old's account to get the first troll asking for sex and photos. It was bad. Now, on the positive side, so many people got arrested. So many people got arrested because that's what it was for. It was arrest perpetrators. So, And she's the adult trained officer who's participating. No, no children, of course, were involved, but very eye-opening. Hackers and spammers have reached just an all-time high of skill level. And something that is super prevalent, particularly on Facebook, is senior fraud. Protect your parents, people. Multiple, multiple seniors are experiencing fraud. Something that's very popular right now, they will be contacted by a celebrity who will become their friend. Um, The two that I know of that are the most popular are Luke Bryan, Mm. country star, and another one I know is Kid Rock. But no, no celebrity is safe. They will pretend to be a celebrity. They will talk to these men and women and pretend to be their friend until they ask for money. And there are people who are being scammed out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. But you know what makes it believable is, can't you just see Kid Rock like randomly friending people on Facebook? I really can. I can't. But I think like, he wouldn't ask for money though. He doesn't need your money. But <laughs> that makes it a little, they chose well when they chose him, I think. Because they're adults and they're capable of adult mature feelings, most of these seniors are so embarrassed by the fact they got hacked or scammed, they will not come forward and tell it. 
Right. And they prey on the lonely and the solitary, which is just a lot of seniors. That's a lot of seniors too. Um, I have several friends whose parents have been targeted. It hurts my heart because they're walking into it. And sadly, the law can't keep up. The law can't keep up. There's a fine line between freedom of speech and insanity. And it's very difficult to prosecute. And then the last thing I would say is stupid for views. And when I say stupid for views, I mean, there are an entire, entire accounts on YouTube dedicated dedicated to pranking unsuspecting people in the worst possible way to get views. People who are doing horrible things to other people to get just to get views. You have no idea how many horror movies are based on social media because all of this is so incredibly possible. There is one movie where a guy pretends to be an Uber driver and he records everything for views and he kills the people. It's a, again, this is a horror movie premise. This is not real. I hope this is not real. He inflicts damage to the people in his car for views, which again, hopefully that's not happening in real life, but there is a whole lot of stupid that happens online for people to get views. Like Becky was talking about uh, when I was a kid, they had movies called Faces of Death Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that showed, I wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole. I think that's horrifying. And now it'll just pop up on whatever, which again, the law can't keep up. And there's so many users on so many platforms the platform can't keep up. There's a reason Facebook's customer service is terrible. They're trying to police a billion people. They very much focus on terrorism and violations related to laws like sex trafficking. Yeah, there's there's a dark side to the internet in general, but social media in particular. Well, you talked yeah. about the pranking. There's also the challenges you know, the cinnamon challenge. Oh, right. You have to like choke yourself until you pass out. Some of it's innocuous, like drinking a whole soda without burping. Innocuous. You're not going to, it's not going to kill you. Most of the time it's pretty hilarious. It's not dangerous, but the cinnamon challenge, it's uncomfortable, but it won't won't kill you. Will it? Am I saying that? Yes, it can. Oh, it will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can it really? Because it's yep. so dusty that it can like clog up your lungs to where you can't breathe. I'm and that's the that. thing is like people don't know and they're like, oh, it maybe it'll taste really strong or taste really bad. And then you have these 12 year olds that are. Yeah. Seems kind of innocent, like just cinnamon. It's just cinnamon, but it's crazy what it'll do. Well, there's all kinds of things that are in my kitchen that will kill you. Yeah. And, and if you're eight, you probably don't know that. Right. Let me counter this with a positive. There are very positive things that happen online. One thing that is happening right now on TikTok, people are paying off their bills with views. <laughs> if you um, will watch a video for a minute, the creator gets paid a certain amount of money. And there are people who are paying for surgeries and medical bills and student loans and rent because other viewers are just watching their videos. And it's a very wholesome experience. And I will go on there and watch just to help other people get paid. Why not? Another thing, this was my This Week in Social Media that has been a little more lighthearted this week, but something that I feel like you're going to have very, very strong opinions on. I have strong opinions on everything, Becky. <laughs> so we know, we know this is the year of the cicada, right? Oh, oh yeah. I have seen so many people I know. I have seen so many posts and videos about how to fry those suckers up and eat them. Absolutely. Not. So Ew. people are taking the invasion of cicadas and turning it into a tasty meal option. Disgusting. And I just wanted to know, would you try it? No, I'm not eating a bug, Becky. The cousin to crustaceans, you know. Ew. Ew. I've tried. No, ew. <laughs> and I can I take this a step further? I heard the other day that they're starting to put, is it cricket? Crushed up crickets? Yeah, cricket powder. As protein in stuff and it's called like a cheta or I don't know that I'm saying that wrong a like a c h e t a and it's like in a lot of protein powders and a lot of that kind of thing and Absolutely not. that's disgusting I'm mean, reading my labels in New Orleans there is a place called the insectarium nope which is kind of like an aquarium but bugs and they actually have a room where you can go in and sample like okay. mealworms and grub worms and they like have- shut this down <laughs> They have the cricket Um, cookies that are like chocolate chip cookies, but there's like little pieces of cricket. Our whole family, except for Robbie, tried them. Robbie chickened out. He wouldn't do it. But the rest of the family tried it, and it wasn't bad. I mean, when you go, what's in my tooth? Oh, it's a leg? No, thanks. No, thank you. (laughs) To be fair, in New Orleans, people go to the bathroom in the street. I'm just not (laughs) for it. 
<laughs> Thanks for the perspective, Karen. I mean, they do that here too. <laughs> here, I'm not eating a pug and I'm not eating an organ out of anything that's been alive. Man, nope. I've eaten squirrels. I've eaten chicken livers. I could probably do it. Liver. <laughs> oh, that gives me the worst childhood flashbacks. Yeah, no, um, thank you. Let's proceed to the next thing now because this is grossing me out. I know. What's the what's the hotline today? Yeah, yeah, hotline. Cause me hotline. Uh huh. Yes, Facebook is still a thing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, thank you for calling. Okay, bye bye. I haven't heard that one. That's hilarious. But we wish it wasn't. But <laughs> sorry, Zuck. I mean, seriously, I actually have the words Facebook sucks on a coffee cup because it does. Um, But it is a necessary evil. Even if you don't get a ton of traction, even if you're not getting a ton of engagement, people validate your business on Facebook first. It's the first place they go. They make sure you're a real business. They'll get your business hours or your phone number from Facebook, even if they don't engage with you. So if you do not have a presence or there's weird gaps in your posting or it's too salesy, they're out. They are already done before they get started. It's kind of like the yellow yellow pages. Yeah. And a great place to get reviews because people are going to, they'll either say they really love it or they say they really hate it. So it's a good place to get that first step. You got to be there. For anyone who's under the age of 20, the yellow pages are (laughs) from the 1900s. It is a version of the phone book that only had business numbers in it. And they called them the yellow pages because they're actually yellow. Man, and they were the go-to. Every once in a blue moon, I'll get a telephone book delivered to my house, which still cracks me up. And the yellow pages were like three or four inches thick of a book. And these are like maybe a half an inch, maybe. I mean, they're so tiny. It's like, who even uses these anymore? But to be fair, Laura, that is a testimony to how adept those salespeople are. And do you know how many years it took me to convince Therese she, in fact, did not need a phone book or yellow pages because of that little thing in her hand. She could look up anything. (laughs) That's like, I remember having a TomTom before you could just use your phone. Uh Uh-huh. Because I'm directionally challenged. And Um, yeah, a (laughs) TomTom. What was that? um, The very GPS, by the way, for people that don't know. In the old days where you print out your... Map quest. Map quest. Map quest. Map quest. You could quest. actually print out written directions. Out. You'd have 18 pages of directions. <laughs> also, for the younger crowd listening, don't always rely on your phone either because Correct. if you go out in the middle of nowhere and you have no service, you're stuck. I do have an I, atlas in my kid's car. I'm like, no, you need to know how to use this because she does drive um a lot. So you need to, you need to have this. I had and my GPS taking me to a Mexican restaurant in Huntsville, Alabama. And I ended up in a residential section and it was like somebody's house is where it took me. And I was, you know, this is not a Mexican restaurant. (laughs) I have no idea where we are. (laughs) Just kidding. Of course you need to be on platforms that work for your business, but there's just, there's no escaping Facebook, which sounds ominous when you say it like that, but that's (laughs) true. It is a necessary evil. You have to be on Facebook. So sip and special tea this week. This one is relatable because it's talking about a CEO, but we've had clients like this as well. It says, my CEO read one article about Instagram and then decided we should test eight variables at once. They thought that after one week of testing, we would have a clear result of what's working on Instagram and what's not. Eight variables at once (laughs) for a single week. Well, for one week, mm, fun times. Eight variables in that one week. And then, then we'll know what works. That's right. That's how it works, people. That's not how it works. <laughs> we don't even want weeks. We want like months of data to see what's working and what's not working to be really effective. You might be able to look after a month and say, oh, this is performing better than this, but you don't get a real idea of what's working for you without having it over time. And one week is not time. I mean, we even, even a 30 day window is really not enough. I mean, you really need 90 mm-hmm. just to get some good feedback. Yeah. We always tell people, this is not a magic bullet. You're not going to get your social media managed. And then a week from now, you're going to have 4,000 new followers and you're going to be getting all this great engagement because it takes us a while to be able to see what your audience is looking for so that we can then create for your audience. And anybody that says that they don't have to do that is just giving you cookie cutter stuff and not doing the research. They're not checking the analytics. (laughs) 
I love it when people say, can you um, post this and it'll go viral? Make us a viral post. Okay. It doesn't work like that. If I could make every post or any post viral, we'd be making so much more money than what we make right now. We'd be taking team retreats to the Caribbean. I mean, just Correct. saying. And listen, we've had some go viral, but they're not even the ones that we think are the best ones. Forever. Sometimes it's just the luck of the draw where you get put out on the explore page and what time of day it is and who happens to be online that day. It's just there's so many different things that go into it that it's not always the best video. So many uncontrollable things that go into it. Right. Social media is challenging. It's challenging for us and we do it every day. This is exactly why we are about to launch a digital course specifically for small business and nonprofit to show you what you need to know so you can effectively optimize your time and be on the platform you need to be on with the content that you need instead of just floundering and wasting a ton of time and effort and money for what it would cost for you to pay to have three platforms managed for a single month. You can train yourself or one of the people on your team to be able to do it all the time. Yeah, if you have the time to do it, we can teach you how to do it. Be sure to join us next week when we're going to be talking about keeping it real on social media. Be there. Thanks for listening to the Social You podcast sponsored by Social University. We'll see you next week.